visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University. Welcome to Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. Welcome to the Use and Care lesson for the Advanced Condor Excel. In this lesson, we will of course be covering how to use and properly care for the Condor Excel Automatic Rider Scrubber. This course is not intended to be a substitute to the operator's manual that ships with the machine. In fact, it is important that you read, understand, and follow all safety and operating instructions in the manual. Doing so will ensure years of safe operation and optimum performance from the machine. This course is an efficient way to understand the operation of the Condor Excel through active learning. After successfully completing this course, you will be able to identify the seven major systems of the Condor Excel, recite the functionality of the user interface buttons, explain how to operate the machine, identify the key equipment safety features and how to use them, perform regular maintenance checks and tasks, and understand the optional features and how to use them. In order to accomplish our outcomes, we will follow this course outline. First, we'll get to know the Condor Excel by going through the major components and systems of the machine, as well as the user interface buttons. Next, we'll discuss the operation of the Condor Excel, and finally, we'll finish up with some routine maintenance steps. Before we dive into understanding how to use a Condor Excel, it's important to first have a basic understanding of the systems. This way, as systems are referenced during this course, you can quickly relate. Let's start with where the operator sits at the operator interface. The operator interface includes a control panel where the red arrow is pointing, as well as the seat, steering wheel, accelerator, and brake. The solution system starts here where the clean water is held. The solution system also includes the plumbing and controls that direct the solution to the scrub deck. AXP is an onboard chemical system your scrubber may or may not be equipped with. If equipped, there will be two 2.5 gallon containers behind this door for carrying chemical, and the chemical is accurately mixed with clean water from the solution tank, where it then travels to the scrub system. The scrub system is quite self-explanatory. It simply scrubs the floor. It may also be referenced to as a scrub deck during this course. The dust card system is a system that is standard on all Condor XLs equipped with a side broom. So this includes the Condor XL 62 and 67 models. It's an innovative system that uses water from the solution tank to fog over the side brooms to prevent fugitive dust from becoming airborne. The recovery system picks up the spent solution. This system starts with the squeegee at the back of the machine and then deposits the spent solution up top here in the recovery tank. Finally, under the hood and back, you'll find the power plant, or what we'll be calling the engine. Rather than describing each of the buttons in a single slide, we're going to go through the machine in the order in which you would use the machine each day and cover each of these systems as we go. If at any point you're having trouble recalling what a certain system is, remember you can always come back to this slide to refresh your memory. The Condor XL is available in one of four different cleaning systems. No matter what system you have, the main scrub deck will be a 48 inch deck with dual counter rotating cylindrical brushes. The difference in cleaning systems occurs at the front of the machine. You can identify the machine you have by the serial plate on the back of the steering column as shown, or just by looking at the front of the machine. If there are no brooms and brushes at the front of the machine, you have a Condor XL48. If there is a scrub brush on the right side of the machine, from the operator's perspective, you have a Condor XL60. If there are sweeping brooms on both corners of the front of the machine, you have a 62. And finally, if there is a right scrub brush and a left sweep brush, you have a Condor XL67. Each of these four machines is available with or without onboard chemical and comes in one of three engine types, gas, diesel, or propane. Now it's time to get into the fun stuff, preparing the Condor XL for operation. When you throw the lights on, your Condor XL should be just as you left it the day before. The recovery tank lid should have been left open to dry, the brushes should be clean and possibly drying outside the machine, the hopper should be in the machine but empty, and the squeegee and side skirt should be clean and ready to use. Before you even start the Condor XL, you need to prep the machine for cleaning by performing these seven steps. At the front left corner of the machine, you will find a fuel tank cover. There is an arrow on the cover indicating which direction to flip the latch. The most common type of fuel for the Condor XL is propane, as shown in the picture. 
Propane tanks have a fuel gauge on them like this. If your machine is a propane machine, check that this gauge is at an okay level. If you have a gasoline or diesel Condor XL, there will be a fuel tank under this hood, but the fuel level will be displayed on the dash display. Next, you'll need to unlatch and lift the hood and back. There is a prop rod to keep it up. Once open, check the oil. The dipstick is easy to find as it is located near the top of the engine. At the back left corner, there is a black reservoir that houses a hydraulic fluid. It is topped with a silver cap. As the label on the tank illustrates, open the cap and check to make sure you can see hydraulic fluid at the bottom of the screen. Next, check the air filter. It is the black cylindrical filter housing just above the hydraulic reservoir. The air filter is quite easy to check. Look for the indicator that is mounted on top of the filter housing that looks like this. If the center is red, rather than clear, it is time to replace or clean the filters. To do this, unclip the latches and pull them out. Note that there is a primary and a secondary filter. Next, close the recovery tank lid. To do this, lift up on the lid itself to take the pressure off the support linkage. Then just push the support linkage in. Now we will install the brushes. Note that there are many different brush types available, so if you have more than one on hand, be sure that you're selecting the right brush for the appropriate application you're about to scrub. To install them, open the side skirt. Push down on the latch and rotate the skirt so you have access to the brush door. To open the brush door, push in on the handle to take the pressure off the latch, then lift on the latch. The handle will then swing out and allow you to open the door. Position the brush at the opening and push it in. Don't worry about which way the brush is facing, it can be installed either way. Push the brush in and when you get close there is an industry trick that is commonly used with brushes and brooms on industrial equipment. If you step on the inside of the brush and push it in with your foot, it raises the far end of the brush and gets it started on the drive hub. With a little practice you can perfect this move quickly. Once you have it started, then you just need to lift up and rotate it left and right until the brush slides onto the hub. Once this happens, you can then close the brush door and side skirt and go on to the other side of the machine to install the other brush. Finally, do a walk around. Have one last look at the machine to make sure it has not been damaged since you last used it. Look for missing parts, leaks, spills, etc. before you even start the machine. Report any suspicious findings to your supervisor. Now we're ready to transport the machine to the area where it can be filled with solution. Board the machine and set the tilt steering wheel to a comfortable position by pulling up on this lever. The seat can also be adjusted forward or backwards to your comfort. Buckle the seat belt if equipped and start the engine by turning the key. It is important not to depress the foot pedal forward or back while you do this as there is a safety protection device in the machine that will not allow the engine to start unless the machine is in a neutral state. When the engine starts, the operator interface will light up and all lights will turn on to illustrate they are all working. After this diagnostic step, you will see the following graphical display. The graphical display shows key information of the operator with a simple glance. The pedal on the left is a service brake that can also be locked when the machine is parked. If the parking brake is set, you will see this symbol on the display. Release the parking brake by pushing in on the lower portion of the pedal, as shown, to release it. When released, the illustration shown that appears in the display screen will go away, and the low solution warning will take its place if the solution tank is empty. If there is some liquid left in the solution tank, you will be able to see all the items normally in the display. The other items in the graphical display are the hour meter, fuel, as stated previously, only if it is a gasoline or diesel machine. Propane machines have their indicator on the tank and this space will be empty. The brush pressure and solution flow rate, which we will cover once we get the machines ready to scrub. Finally, the Condor XL has a complete diagnostic system, so any problems with the machine will be shown in the display with an error code next to the symbol that looks like a wrench, where the hour meter normally is. Now you can proceed to the area which you will fill the machine with water and chemical. The machine will be in idle mode. Depress the rabbit turtle button to increase the engine's RPMs to go to an operating mode. The machine uses a bi-directional accelerator pedal. This is the foot pedal on your right. Depress this pedal forward to go forward and backward to go backward. The foot pedal is fully variable, meaning that just like a car, the further you depress the pedal, the faster the machine will travel. Once you arrive at the fill area, set the parking brake by pushing in on only the top part of the brake pedal as shown by the red arrow. It will click as you set it and the parking brake symbol will show again on the display. Turn the machine off. Next, if your machine has an onboard chemical dispensing system, check the level in the tanks. Two two and a half gallon tanks are located behind this door. Push the latch to the left and open it. 
Slide the tank tray out to investigate the level in the tanks. This space will be empty if you do not have an onboard chemical system. You can fill both tanks with the same chemical, or each with a different chemical. Switching is done by moving the hose from one tank to the other. Be sure you understand the dilution ratio or ratios of the chemical or chemicals you are using, as we will use them later to program the machine to mix a chemical properly. Chemical manufacturers provide a suggested dilution ratios like 128 to 1 for example. Some will use ounces per gallon such as 1 ounce per gallon and a few will use a percentage like 0.8%. Verify the suggested ratio. It should be on the label of the chemical itself. If not, look at the suggested ounces per gallon or percentage and convert it to a ratio. Keep note of this ratio as later we will verify the machine is set up properly for your specific chemical. If an outboard detergent dilution system like a wall mount station is used, fill the machine from this device. If you do not have an onboard chemical system or an outboard chemical system, you will be mixing chemical in the solution tank. To get good chemical mixing, open the solution tank cover and fill the tank about a third full. Then add your chemical and finally top off the tank. Reference the dilution ratios for the chemical you're using and mix properly with understanding that the Condor XL solution tank is 100 gallons. To fill the solution tank, you'll find the lid on the right side of the machine. Push the black button to release the latch and open the lid. Note a foothold is provided for you to climb up and inspect the level of water in the tank. Fill the tank with water. Hot or warm water cleans best, but note the water temperature should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit. If the machine is equipped with onboard detergent, fill the machine with pure water only. In all cases, fill the machine so the solution level is about 2 to 3 inches below the fill port. Now you are ready to reboard the machine, start it up, release the parking brake, and head for the spot you wish to scrub. To begin scrubbing with the Condor XL, press and hold the solution on-off switch for a few seconds. This will dispense solution to the deck. While this step is not critical on durable surfaces like concrete, more delicate floor types like epoxy coatings can be scoured if you start up with dry brushes, so this helps provide lubricity to help prevent this from occurring. The best practice to prevent any damage to the floor when starting or stopping scrubbing is to have the machine in motion slightly before you begin scrubbing. To start scrubbing, press the true one-touch green scrub button. The scrub on-off switches are color-coded. Green means go and red means stop. Pressing the one-touch green scrub switch will activate the entire scrub system and the indicator lights will show this. The solution pump, solenoid valve, brush drives, vacuum system, side brooms, and dust guard system if equipped, as well as the chemical pumps if equipped, will all be set to active. None of these operations, however, will begin until the foot pedal is depressed as this preserves fuel and prevents unnecessary wear to brushes and the floor. Before you touch off on the pedal, however, it's a good idea to check the dilution ratio of the onboard chemical if your machine is equipped and make sure that it matches the manufacturer's recommended ratio. To do this, recall the dilution ratio we said earlier to make note of when you are filling the chemical tanks. Look for the icon that looks like a beaker. Turn this light off by pressing the button, then press and hold the button until the green light flashes. Now you've entered change mode and you can repeatedly tap the button to toggle through the chemical mixing ratios which can be seen in the display. Stop tapping the button once the desired ratio is displayed and after two seconds the ratio selected is locked into the machine. This ratio will stay programmed into the machine until it is changed the same way again. Okay, you're all set. Again to scrub now, you just depress the foot pedal and all operations will begin. To pause scrubbing, release the foot pedal and allow the machine to go to neutral and all operations will automatically cease after a few seconds. The vacuum will stop after a 10 second delay to help clear the vacuum hose and squeegee of any remaining water. To stop scrubbing, simply press the red off switch again and the scrub deck and rear squeegee will lift and the vacuum system will shut off again after a 10 second delay. That's it. You basically know how to run the Condor XL. For the most part, anyway. The Condor XL is as simple as pressing the green and red scrub buttons due to the innovative engineering put into the machine. For most applications, this is all that's needed. That said, there are many other things the Condor XL can do, so we'll spend the next few minutes going over the other buttons. To extend your knowledge of operating the Condor XL beyond just the green and red one-touch buttons, let's first look at how to increase the scrub pressure. First, note that the Condor XL features integrated scrub pressure and solution control. Advance has taken the guesswork out of scrubbing through innovative engineering. The Condor XL is calibrated to use the correct combination of brush pressure and solution flow rate to clean regular, 
heavy, and extreme soil loads. As such, there are three corresponding scrub pressure settings on the Condor XL, which we refer to as regular, heavy, and extreme. The regular scrub mode is a default mode each time the one touch green button is first depressed to activate the scrub system. This is indicated by the first light on the green one touch button and by the display where one bar of scrub pressure and one bar of solution flow are automatically tied together. The Condor XL always defaults to this lowest pressure and lowest solution flow rate to promote long brush life, lower fuel usage, and less water and chemical usage. To clean heavy soil loads, one needs more pressure and more water. By pressing the green one-touch button a second time, the heavy scrub mode is indicated by two scrub pressure bars and two solution flow bars. To clean extreme soils, you need extreme pressure and extreme solution flow. Extreme scrub mode is indicated by three scrub pressure bars and three solution flow bars. If you do not like the automatic linking of brush pressure and solution, you can choose to set the Condor XL functionality as last remembered, which means each time the green button is pressed, it will go back to the last setting you scrubbed at. This is particularly helpful if you have a pet setting that you like. Consult the service manual for this programming step. Also note that even though the Condor XL takes much of the guesswork out of scrubbing, an operator can still easily and independently control the solution flow separate from the brush pressure. This is especially handy in circumstances where one may want to change the solution flow rate without changing the scrub pressure. An example might be if a potted plant were spilled. In this case you wouldn't need a lot of scrub pressure to clean the floor, but you might need a lot of water to suspend this large quantity of dirt in the water so it can be vacuumed from the floor. In the example shown you can see that the operator has selected the lowest pressure setting but maximum solution flow rate at 5 bars. To increase the solution flow rate, press the solution increase button as shown. To decrease, conversely press the decrease button. Finally, you can turn the water on and off by pressing this button. Being able to turn the water off comes in handy, for example, if you're double scrubbing an area and there's enough solution on the floor and no more is needed. Double scrubbing is where you scrub, but do not pick up the water, but instead leave it dwell on the floor. You can think of it like soaking a really dirty dish in the sink. The time you allow it to soak help makes it easier to scrub. We'll cover this in more detail in a few minutes. While well, we've covered most of the key buttons and functionality, let's take a minute to go through all of the buttons on the dash to assure you understand them. Pressing the horn switch sounds the horn as long as it is pressed. Some machines are also equipped with a foot activated horn that you'll find near the brake pedal. This button is the extended scrub button. It is not a common option, but if your machine is equipped, it allows the machine to scrub longer off a tank of solution by recycling the solution. Once the solution tank is empty, the water in the recovery tank is recycled. This recycling only takes place in the recovery tank. Recovered water is never put into the solution tank. If your machine is not equipped, this is a dead button. If it is equipped, this button turns the system on and off, and you will see electrical and plumbing on top of the recovery tank as pictured as well as the filtration screen and float in the recovery tank. Like any of the systems, the green light will be on when the system is active. When the system is recycling, the recycling symbol will show up in the display. The wand button turns on the vacuum so that the aisle wand accessory can be used. This accessory is stored under the hood next to the engine. To use it, disconnect the vacuum hose from the top of the stainless steel fitting as shown. Then attach this hose to the coupler on the vacuum wand hose. When assembled, it should look like this, and you're ready to vacuum water. When done, press the wand button to turn off the vacuum, then reconnect the hose and put the wand kit back in its fixture. The onboard chemical button turns the system on and off as previously mentioned. This would be a dead button if your machine is not equipped. This is a squeegee raised lower button and can be used for a few things. When you need to wet vacuum with the machine, like in cases such as a flood from a broken water pipe, or just to pick up water on the floor, the squeegee can be lowered without scrubbing. This button also allows a user to raise the squeegee while scrubbing to double scrub tough soil loads. By raising the squeegee, no water is picked up and it can dwell on the floor. When double scrubbing, it is also a good idea to raise the side skirts as this prevents them from wiping water away that you wish to keep on the floor to soak. To do this, lift on the side skirt and then rotate the lock to the up position. Obviously, you'll want to do this on both sides of the machine. The solution function we already covered. To recap, the round button in the center can be held to pump water to the deck and pre-wet the floor. Otherwise, it normally turns the solution system on 
and off. The up and down arrows above and below this button of course increase and decrease the solution flow rate. These left and right arrows are turn signal buttons. If your contract cell is equipped with a turn signal, brake, and four-way hazard package, these buttons serve as your left and right turn signals. If your machine is not equipped, these are dead buttons. Press them once to turn the signal on, and again to turn them off. To turn on the four-way hazards, this button is pressed. Like the turn signals, this button does nothing if your machine is not equipped. This button's function is dependent on your machine type. If you have a Condor XL48, these buttons do nothing. If you have any of the other machines with side brooms, side scrub, or a combination of both, the round center button will disable any of these devices while scrubbing. Recall they are automatically turned on when the green one-touch scrub button is pressed. The up and down arrows are for those machines with side brooms, which are the Condor XL62 and 67. What they allow you to do is adjust the height of the side broom on the fly from the operator's seat. This is especially handy as the side brooms wear as it makes adjustment an effortless task. This button is for dust guard. Dust guard is a highly innovative feature found on the Condor XL62 and 67, basically those machines with side brooms. What dust guard does is take solution from the tank and pump it through fine nozzles where it emits a fine fog in front of the side broom or brooms. This fog serves as a blanket that prevents fugitive dust from being raised by the side brooms and allows you to scrub indoors with best-in-class indoor air quality. This button simply allows the user to disable the dust guard system if you so desire. This is the headlight button. All Condor XLs are equipped with headlights standard. This button simply turns them on and off. Finally, the rabbit turtle button. As we said earlier, this button takes the engine from idle to operating RPM and vice versa. What we did not cover was that for those tough applications with steep grades while running at operating RPM, you can press and hold this button and get another 200 RPM out of the engine. Most applications do not require this much power, so unless the machine is laboring in certain applications, you should not use this added power as it will only reduce your fuel efficiency. Eventually the solution tank will be empty and the recovery tank will be full. While the solution tank and recovery tank are the same size, in the event that more water is picked up than put down, like in the case of a spill for example, the Condor XL has a recovery float switch that protects the vacuum motor from ingesting water. Once the recovery switch is tripped, the display will show a full tank and the recovery system will automatically be shut off. If the solution tank runs out before the recovery tank is full, then an empty tank warning will be shown on the display. When either of these conditions occur, transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it. The recovery tank dump hose is located at the side of the machine. Pull it out and use your hand to clamp the hose so that when you open the cap, you can meter the water out at a flow rate your drain will accept. Note that many drains cannot handle the volume at which the water comes out of the Condor XL recovery tank. Once the recovery tank is empty, you're going to do one of two things. Either you have more scrubbing to do, in which case you should go back and refill the solution tank, or you are done scrubbing and it's time to prep the machine for storage. We'll assume you're done scrubbing for the day. The first step to cleaning up the Condor XL at the end of the day is to clean out the recovery tank. To clean out the recovery tank, leave the drain hose open and with the lid open, spray the tank down. The Condor XL is equipped with a tip-out lift-off recovery tank. By simply depressing this latch here, you can tip the tank out like this to make clean out easier. If you unclip the cable tether, you can also lay the tank down to ease cleaning, or two people can then lift it off the machine if, for instance, you want to bring it to a pressure washing bay for a deep cleaning. Your machine may also be equipped with a recovery tank cleanout port kit. This kit is commonly used when the debris is sludgy or thick. To use this feature, remove the two Allen head fasteners with the wrench supplied with the machine and you will have a large opening for aiding and cleaning. If your machine is equipped with a debris catch cage, empty this at this time also. Finally, make sure the recovery tank float switch is clean. You will find it on the bottom of the lid. You can leave the recovery tank lid open as you will want it to air dry overnight. Now you can rinse off the squeegee and inspect it to make sure the blades are not ripped or torn. If they need to be changed or replaced, do that now. To do this, remove the vacuum line by removing these two thumb nuts. Then use the built-in tools to loosen the fasteners. Here's a closer look at one of the two thumb nuts and squeegee fasteners. Flip or replace the blades as needed and reinstall the squeegee when you're finished. 
Note that the operator's manual has a great section illustrating the four sides that can be used for every blade, as well as how the squeegee should be adjusted properly. In short, there are two knobs that control the height of the squeegee, as well as a single knob which turns after you push down on the spring-loaded lock that adjusts the attitude of the squeegee, or in other words, how evenly the squeegee wipes from its tips to the center. All adjustments can be made without the use of tools. Open up the side skirts and remove the brushes. Inspect the brushes and check to see if they need to be replaced. If they do, do that now. If not, set them aside to dry. As long as your side skirt is open, remove the hopper and empty it. There's a handle molded into the hopper bottom so you don't have to stick your hand in the hopper. As you pull it out, unplug the vacuum line from the strainer. Dump the hopper and rinse it out. If the hopper is packed with fine debris, it is easiest to empty it by setting it on its end as shown and tapping it against the ground. There's a drain hole provided for the purpose of getting it completely cleaned out. Reinstall the hopper and close up the side skirts. Finally, use a damp rig to wipe the machine down as necessary. Oh, and one last thing. Don't forget to turn the light off when you leave the room. Besides the maintenance that is done on the machine on a daily basis, there is also maintenance required periodically. Please reference the operator's manual for the specifics on these maintenance items as we will only cover them briefly now. Weekly one should do the following. Purge the onboard chemical system if equipped. Inspect the main scrub deck skid plates and replace if worn below 1 8 inch. Finally, inspect and clean the solution filter. This is located at the back of the machine near the solution pump. Depending on what accessories the machine may have, there may be up to three pumps located in this spot, like in the picture shown. Note that there is a shutoff valve provided so that you can check the solution filter without having to first empty the solution tank. These are the other maintenance steps that should be performed on the Condor XL. Performing them regularly will maximize your Condor XL's performance and life. These other maintenance items are outlined in your operator's manual. Make a copy to keep with the machine. If your company does its own service, make sure these items are captured in any preventive maintenance system you may have. If you do not perform your own service on equipment, your local servicing technician can make sure this maintenance is done. If you need another copy of the operator's manual or have questions about how to perform these steps, you can consult with the service manual. Both can be found at www.advance-us.com. At this point in the lesson, you should be able to identify the seven major systems of the Condor XL, recite the functionality of the user interface buttons, explain how to operate the machine, identify the key equipment safety features and how to use them, perform regular maintenance checks and tasks, and finally understand the optional features found on your machine and how to use them. I would like to personally take this opportunity to thank you for taking the time to review this NOFISQ presentation on the Advance Condor XL. Visit us on the web at nilfiskyou.com. Nilfisk University is the cleaning equipment industry's most comprehensive web-based training and interactive learning resource. Your degree in success is just a click away at Nilfisk University.